Hey, little buddy. Hey, Fievel. Okay, come on, come over here. Come over here. Hop. Look at how pretty he is. He's gonna try to climb up my arm to get into my sweater, but I'm gonna go outside, so. Just gonna play with him a bit. Not today, Fievel. Oh, you sneaky little butter. Come on. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. Peace out. Hello. Today I'm going to show you one of my oldest and also my newest project. It's these rock walls and pens. Mind you, 2020 ain't a good time to be building walls, but I'll tell you why or how maybe this is justified. <laughs> On this lake here, we have big boats like that one there, and they create massive waves. And they kind of destroy the, <laughs> the natural ecosystem just by massive erosion. So what I've done here is built a break wall, and this break wall allows shelter for these plants to take root here. So the lily pad here, I anchor them in with a ceramic and then once they're established, take the ceramic away and they stay really well. And the rock wall also allows shelter for uh, aquatic insects, fish, frogs. So this year we actually had two different species of fish nest in here. We had smallmouth bass, and we had sunfish. So you can tell that this was an old nest because it's all gravel and it's sand right beside it. So what happened was the fish used its tail to fan the sand away. And this one's filled in a lot now, but this area here where the pine needles have settled was a sunfish nest. And the sunfish came in after the smallmouth bass. And then what I've done recently is I had this wall along built last year that just connected to there. But I noticed that it was much harder for fish to get in, obviously, because they have to come all the way from there. So I'm allowing channels, and this is easy for me now to walk out to swim, but the fish can come along, get in to either of these, and I'll start filling this one full of plants. And, well, soon, gotta transplant them all in. I'll be transplanting, those are fragrant lily. I wanna transplant in the cow lily, which is like a bigger lily pad and pickerel weed and I want to get cattail and wapato but they're a little trickier they want kind of muddy spot and I've just got sand and gravel and over here is actually where the oldest pen was built which was not this it was a tiny little thing in there that I used to catch rock bass with bacon on a hook and then I'd put them in the pen and then a boat wave would break it and they'd all get free which was definitely a good thing but as I worked here to clear out gravel to make it nicer to walk, uh, I filled in this area and I started to grow cranberry. So this little vine in here is cranberry. So there's a couple going all the way back to there and coming through. I hope this all fills in. The beaver, when the water was high this year, he actually brought in all of his cuttings and it was like a little feed bed for him, which is pretty cool, but beaver's gone. He hasn't been hanging around. And then we have here is the current site of building. Walls end in there. And you can see I've been rolling in the big boulders. And I've got a stack of some nice flat stones there. And then we have the tool of the trade, which is, <laughs> sorry, which is my big, or it's not even mine, my grandpa's, my uncle's, someone's big iron bar none of this is really mine <laughs> anyways big iron bar about 20 pounds use it to pry everything some of these boulders obviously this one it's way too big for my fragile little bod and we've got this is the big causeway it's kind of unfathomable amount of stone that i've moved Water is about two and a half feet deep here. And the way that this wall is built, or this walkway is built, is that there's two walls, and then the center is filled with gravel. 
So you can see here, I use the flat stones and the more geometric stones to make the walls on either side. Mind you, it's collapsed a little bit. Then I fill the middle with small pieces and then slap these thick flagstones on top to make it comfy for walking. And this rock wall is about uh, maybe just over a third done and it's gonna continue from here, go out to this rock here. It kind of does a curve. I'm, I'm following the high ground because it's like four feet deep here and nice and flat, like a foot here. So, and then it goes straight out, hits this rock and goes to this one. And the reason why I'm building this big walkway is actually for fishing. So I can walk out to the deep waters and cast my line without getting snagged. But I want to build the pens all the way out to here so that fish can come in here to have shelter for their babies and for nesting. So the rock wall there will follow to this one. It'll go boop and then boop and then right to this puppy here. So it'll be another kind of squiggle. So I'm moving a lot of these boulders out and I'm thinking that I'll probably put in a secondary wall here. So there'll be like a gate, a wall with a gate, wall with a gate and I'll move this pen wall forward because there's nothing really happening in there. Um, so I'll move that forward to allow more plants, more fish to come in. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked on all this. It's definitely my favorite thing to do in the entire planet. <laughs> and then right back up the hill, which is pretty cool because I, I don't think I've mentioned all the plants that I want to transplant uh, are largely edible. They have either one piece of them or the whole thing is edible. So it'd be creating like a natural, a wild garden, wild farm. And here we got beans and tomatoes and uh, the last of my radishes that I'm letting go to seed, a little lettuce bed and a mystery bed where everything kind of got snapped by the wind. This is the only thing that I originally planted that survived. It was all shiso originally and hajiki and the wind killed it all, snapped all the stems. So now it's full of green onion. Uh, volunteer bok choy did it all on its own and I don't have any seeds of this anymore. So I'm letting this one go to seed so I can plant it again. And we got beets that are just starting to take shape. Ooh, I snapped a leaf off. I'll feed that to Fievel. Basil, that's a cutting that I took from an ant. Lovely compost more tools of the trade. <laughs> a hawk wing that I found. I don't know how the fuck that happens. My brother says it probably got eaten by an owl. Anyways, what I got next on the menu, actually, here you go, Fievel. Take a little munch if your heart desires. His heart desires. Oh, what a beauty. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna have a video coming up for transplanting all those plants into here, as well as showing how to cook them all. So we'll be making salsas, we'll be making fish tacos, we'll be making tortillas. Um, I'm pretty stoked on it. And I'm also gonna take you guys out on an adventure in the ship over there, my beautiful vessel. So. Lastly, before this video ends, I'm gonna show you some footage that I took while swimming with the bass, which is really cool. And I'm gonna pair it with uh, some music by my friend, Stuart Smythe, whose music name, or I don't know, not pen name. Anyways, his artist name is Light Blending In, and he's made a really cool album that's kind of, it, well, it sounds to me like really aquatic inspired and sounds like you're, swimming in the ocean. So cue some really cool fish and some really nice music.
I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye